Let's see what Chris Hipkins can do. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Mr Chairman, I'm, I'm looking uh, forward to this debate on the commencement and when, when this bill should come into, come into effect. And I have three main points that I want to, to uh, raise in favour of deferring the date upon which this bill comes into, effect, uh, comes into effect. The first of which is around the fiscal risk to the government posed by this bill. Because this bill doesn't just have an impact on students. The impact that it will have on students flows onto the institutions, which flows onto the government. And I want to explain that. And that's one of the reasons why I think this needs to be delayed, because I think uh, dealing with the flow-on impact of, these, of the decisions uh, being taken in this bill will take longer than the sort of nine to ten months that this bill is effectively allowing for that to happen. Because when, uh, if the students' associations become completely voluntary and uh, uh, their ability to raise a compulsory levy, a universal levy of students, is removed, uh, many of the services that they currently provide, uh, the universities, the polytechnics, the institutions, are going to want to continue to provide. They're going to have to pay for those somehow, and of course they're going to have to pay for that either by increasing fees to, uh, to, to students or by finding the money from somewhere else. Should they choose the option of increasing their fees or their levies to students, the flow-on impact of that is that's going to result in student loan borrowing. It's going to have a flow-on impact to student loan borrowing, uh, which will flow into the uh, fiscal risk for the Crown uh, and ultimately increase the cost of the student loan scheme. Now, I, I believe that it will increase the cost of the student loan scheme more than simply removing the existing students' association levies, because, as I intend to argue later on in the debate, I don't believe that the institutions can provide the services students' associations currently provide uh, for the same cost. I think it will cost the institutions more. So that's the first argument. The first argument for deferring it is even if we go ahead and do this and make students' associations voluntary, we need to make sure that all of the fiscal risks are adequately dealt with in, dealing with, uh, in, in implementing this law uh, and that it's sufficiently worked through. The second, uh, and I think it's quite a, a complex issue, relates to the assets that are currently held by students' associations. Because in some cases, students' associations do actually hold a significant number of assets, many millions of dollars worth in the case of uh, one or two associations. If we pass this bill, which makes the association membership entirely voluntary, the question of who actually is accountable for those assets, who has responsibility, the ownership of those assets, actually becomes a very vexed issue. And that the incumbent executives, for example, on an association, may actually ultimately then have, you know, total control of that without an accountability back to the universal wider membership base that they have. Now when we're talking about millions of dollars worth of assets, I think that's going to take some time to work through. And I actually think we're going to want to take some steps to protect those assets so that a small group of students doesn't end up capturing these shortly to become voluntary membership organisations and basically asset strip them which is a very real possibility. We could see a small number of people stripping the assets out of the students' associations, and I think we need to avoid that. Once again, if this, you know, I I'm opposed to the bill, but if the bill is to be passed, we should actually take all steps to ensure that it's done responsibly. And I don't think that we can do that in the period of time that this uh, commencement clause is going to allow. The third point that I want to raise is around whether or not, in fact, this bill is widely supported and whether or not the uh, commencement date allows time for democracy to take its course. There is a general election on the 26th of November. Uh, the overwhelming majority of submitters uh, to this bill, I'm told by my colleagues on the Select Committee, were opposed to it. Those people may choose to exercise their rights at the general election and vote against this current National Act government. Uh, they may choose to elect a new government and that new government should have the time, should they wish to, to preserve uh, the universal nature of students' association membership. Under this, uh, at the moment, it would require basically that new government to push that uh, bill through all stages under urgency, uh, which is not something that the national government are unfamiliar with, uh, but it is something that an incoming Labour government would be less likely to wish to do, because we actually believe in the democratic process of Parliament and in doing things properly. And we, wouldn't, we don't intend to uh, rush a bill like this through after the next election. When we, when we resume, uh, when we, when we uh, return to government because the New Zealand public are getting fed up of this government already. So those are the, the three main arguments, I think, that I have for deferring the commencement date of this particular piece of legislation. We need to deal with the fiscal risks to the government. 
We need to protect the assets, the many millions of dollars of assets that students associations currently hold, and we need to make sure that New Zealanders, all New Zealanders, are given the opportunity to have their voice heard. Chair. Mr. Chair.